All right, in this tutorial, I wanted to go over a little bit more about the click command, but I found something while I was looking up the click command that I thought was very interesting as I started playing with it and exploring with it. And so I think that this might be a good way to get some of the questions that I've received on that first video out of the way, just by walking through what I found with this and then playing with the script a little bit to show you how I experiment with these kind of things to make them work for me. I was looking at how to use mouse get position and I stumbled upon this forum post. Quick perfect circle and this was by a guest in 2010. And at the end of it they say never mind I got it this is the script that I was looking for. And you can see they've written out the code here for us. So I took this because I wanted to see how it worked and I went and created a brand new auto hotkey script. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one real quick. I'm going to do new auto hotkey script, right click context menu, and I'm going to type circle.ahk. Now I'm going to right click this. I'm going to hit edit script, pops open notepad so that I can paste in the detail that they had right there. So I just go ahead and paste this in right underneath all of this information that's in that pre-generated auto hotkey script. So all this stuff up here does do a couple things, but we're not really going to worry about most of it for right now. I'll walk you through what this script does. Input box, input my radius, it asks us for a radius. And then using the control and then the number five as a hotkey, it then launches into this code down here. The first thing it'll do is grab the position of the mouse, then it will move the mouse, and then it will click on the left mouse button down. Then it will loop 64 times and using the radius that we gave it, do an approximation of radians to draw that circle using sine and cosine. And then it moves the mouse in between each step as it's holding down the left mouse button then at the very end of the script, it will let off of that and then it will return. So every time you press control five, it walks through all of these steps and then it returns. Two other things that we have down here is control and then the back tick. And this will pause our script and then control two will reload our script. So that's enough about talking about it. Let's see it in action. First thing I did was I fired up MS Paint and I said, all right, let's give this script a whirl. Now that I've got it pasted in here, I can save it, I can close it because I have auto hotkey installed. I can double click it and it tells me right away, input my radius. Let's go with 30. Okay. Now I go into MS Paint, I select my brush. Let's go with about like that. And we'll go ahead and press control five. We'll do it again over here and we'll do it again right here. So what you can see is that the script is firing off so fast that it really can't even track the input, particularly this circle right here. You can see that's not really a circle. So what's happening here? My first instinct in looking at this script was thinking, well, look at this, it's using mouse click. And in our last video, we were going over the click command. So I thought, all right, let's change this down to click. And we'll change this one to click as well. And then we can uh, modify this so that it matches the click command. Now I've already done this, so I'm gonna open up the script and show you here what the difference is. I'm gonna copy this row, I'm gonna paste it in right underneath this so that we can compare the two of them. Remember that this is mouse click. You can see that the left portion of it, the zero and the D have all been changed on this click command. So we want the click X and Y coordinates and then whether it is the left or a right mouse button, then D indicates down. So the positioning in between mouse click and click in the way that we send the commands to auto hotkey has changed. So I did that. And if I go ahead and take this click left with D and replace that there, go down here, take this click left and U. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on my circle script here. I'm gonna close it. And I'm going to press control two to reload my circle script. I'm going to go ahead and do 35 this time. I'm going to pick red and I'm going to press control five. And as you can see, it's not the click command or mouse click that's causing my circles 
to show up almost a little bit more like octagons than having this to be a circle. My next thought was, okay, maybe because of the way that the circle script is written, let's go ahead and open it. Maybe what I need to do is make a delay in mouse move here. So I went ahead and I put a number at the end of this. Mouse move has a speed parameter here. You can pick a number between zero and 100 and zero being the fastest and 100 being the slowest. We put that number in there and what this should do is slow this down to the slowest possible input that auto hotkey will take. So I've changed that to 100 and I'm gonna go ahead and go back in here. I'm gonna switch my color to orange, press control two to reload. We'll pick 35. I'm going to press control five now to run my script. Oh no. Okay. So now that I've put that in there, what's going on now? You can see as I'm pressing this, I'm getting all sorts of weird circles. They're not quite nice, smooth circles. So what's happening here when I took a look at this is that even though I've put this in here, when I looked at the help, it did say that send mode input is going to ignore this number here. So the last thing that I did was I went ahead and changed the way that the input mode is utilized during the time at which it's using this portion of the script. To do that, we say we change and add send mode event right before we enter our loop. So if I go in here and I hit edit, right after right before the loop, we put send mode event. Right after the loop, we put send mode input. So that will change it so that during the duration of the loop, we're using send mode event instead of send mode input. Now, if I take that send mode event, and then after our loop, send mode input, I can hit file, save, and I can then reload the script by pressing control two, input radius, let's go 42. We're gonna pick purple for this one. When I press control five, you can see now that my input of 100 as the speed definitely has an impact in how quickly we are drawing this circle. If I say, okay, that's a little bit too slow. I'd like this to move a little bit snappier than that, right? Let's go ahead and close this one. I'm gonna close this. We're gonna go in here. We're gonna edit this script for this. And what we want to have in here is instead of 100, oh, looks like I'm still looking at this modded circle one. Let's go ahead and close all these. Make sure we're looking at the right thing. We're going to edit this script. And instead of 100, I'm going to put zero and hit file and hit save. We're going to run this. We're going to pick 42. Okay. Then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to select pink, control five. Now it's not quite as instantaneous as these circles over here, but you can see that we get a much smoother output, which is likely what we're desiring to see. That we don't want to have this choppy octagonal circle or to have these big chunks taken out of it. We're trying to draw a circle here, and to do that we want the computer to be able to keep up with our input. Now this is maybe one of many different ways that we could solve this problem, but this is definitely one that works. Now I'm going to show you something that I also noticed. that required me to do a little bit of change to the script as well. When I press control five and I do it again, and I do it again, what you can see is that I'm actually making a set of circles that are going down and slightly to the right. If I keep going on and iterating, you can see them just going down and down and down and down. And if I take a line and I draw these through, it's not quite straight and it's going down and to the right. So are we actually drawing a perfect circle starting from one point and going around to the other side? And the answer to that is no, we're not. If I take a look at our circle, our script, you can see here that we're looping at 64 times, but the calculation that we're doing is actually using radians. So if we wanted to get a little bit more precise with this, we'd actually want to go down to about 62.8 approximately. We can check that by saying, how many radians are in a circle? You see here, approximately 6.28 radians are in a circle. What we're doing here is we can take this and we can say loop it 62 times or 63 times as we're dividing by 10 right here. 
and we can hit save on this. 63 should give us a little bit closer. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to switch my color now to a lime green. I'm going to press control two to reload. We're going to go 42 again, and I'm going to start pressing control five. First though, I should probably switch back to my brush tool so that I don't draw a strange line like that. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Now granted, you're probably not going to ever want to really draw circles in a direct line, but I just found it interesting that it was offset just a little bit. And the reason being that we're using those radians to calculate how we're going to be drawing this circle. In reality, what we more than likely would want is if we're actually trying to draw a circle around a point on our screen, we probably want our mouse to return back to that point. Inside of the script, what we can see is that we're starting after control five by get my position, start X, start Y. Then we do all of our stuff. We switch our input back and we left click up. So we're releasing the click right here. What we should want to do is we want to move our mouse, mouse move back to our start position. You can see here in the drawing that we're actually using these variables for draw X and draw Y as our position to where we're moving the mouse. So I'll go ahead and put percent start X percent comma percent start Y percent and comma and zero for a speed. I hit file, save, minimize this. We'll go ahead and start another row. We'll pick the blue here. I'll press control two to reload. We'll go with an input radius of about 54. Okay, we'll press control five. And what you can see now is that my script has moved my mouse position right back into the center of, well, not the best X there, but right back into the center of my circle. So I can start from here again. Another way to visualize this is if I press control five once, press it again, I'm basically drawing the same circle over and over and over again. Now, if I wanted to make this happen twice, I have a couple of options available. One way to do this would be to trigger this, copy all of this code, and then paste it right back in underneath itself. But since we're using radians to do this, we can actually type 126 here. And if I have file, save, and we'll close it, I'm gonna hit control two to reload, we'll pick 57, okay? And we're gonna use the dark red here. I'm gonna press control five. And what you'll see is that my mouse is now actually drawing two circles before it returns back to the center. I thought all this was a little bit interesting and help, might help to illustrate a couple of different ways that we are using the click command to click and hold to draw a circle, that we're using the mouse get pause command to grab the starting position and then increment that starting position using a loop as well as using mouse move to return back to that starting position. And this also talks a little bit about the send modes. I didn't really go into why I chose send mode event. The important part for this video is to know that send mode is something that might impact the way in which these commands are being sent to your computer. So if it's happening too fast, send mode input, which is the default for all starting scripts, might not be what you want. You may want to try out some of the other send modes like event. If anything in this video uh, is confusing, if you wanted to have some, if you had some questions about it, or if you wanted to get some more clarification on this, or maybe uh, ask a question about how you might be able to utilize this in your workflow, feel free to go ahead and add a comment below. And if you've made it this far, please consider liking this, liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you and have a wonderful day.